Hi, this is Dan Fitzpatrick, the AI educator. When I'm giving talks to teachers and leaders within education, I always like to show them an example of ChatGPT marking an exam question. And I do it to provoke because I want them to see that, especially with ChatGPT4, how accurately it can mark student answers. And it provokes, it splits the room. Half the room kind of suddenly think, wow, this is amazing. It's going to save me so much time. And, and many teachers do say that. And then the other half of the room, they kind of slowly come to the realisation, well, actually, what does that mean for feedback? What does it mean for marking and the, the role of the human and the, the journey with the, the students and the teacher? Um, because that's obviously going to be impacted and it's a, and it's a crucial part of, of, of the learning experience for students in our schools. So we have, a, we have a conversation around it normally, and I sometimes share an example that I came across, which, which I absolutely love, where, where a teacher doesn't just use ChatGPT to mark the work and give the grade and the feedback to the students, because among other things, the student's probably going to disengage with that teacher, disengage with, with that course, simply because I think feedback's got two sides to it. There's the side where we, we need we need the, the statistical academic progress and the, the pointers for the next stages. But then there's also the side where the student needs to feel that the stu that the teacher is with them, that they like their work, that they're journeying with them on that work and that they care about their progress. So I share an example that I really love, which and some of you might have heard of the whole class feedback crib sheet. Um, I can't remember who came up with it at the moment, but I will find out and I'll just put them at the bottom of the screen to give them full credit. But essentially, it's a way to save time and still get a similar impact in from marking students' work. So let me show you what's included within the whole feedback sheet. And I'll show you how you can use something like ChatGPT to actually help you analyse a whole group of student answers that can then inform your next lesson. And the fact that it's informing your next lesson means that the output for the student hasn't necessarily changed because they're still going to have that connection with you as a teacher and they're not just going to have an output from ChatGPT, but you're going to use it to inform you to either reteach or to move on or to delve a bit deeper with a few students in the next lesson. So let's jump into it. Okay, so here is my whole class feedback prompt for ChatGPT. And as you can see at the top there, I've started off with, I am a teacher. The reason why it's got three stars either side of it is because that's going to tell ChatGPT some more specifics about what type of teacher I am at the bottom. And then you can edit those bits. So if I scroll down, you can see under the dotted line, it has teacher with three stars either side equals high school geography teacher. So th for the purpose of this example, um, I am a high school geography teacher. And this just makes it really easy. So when I hand all of this to you as your template, which I'm going to do, give this to you completely free, then you can just edit the bits in blue at the bottom. So let's go back to the top. I am a teacher. I want you to assist me with my marking of student work. And as you can see, anyone who's familiar with my prep framework, where we started off with the first P of prep framework, which is the initial prompt. Uh, next, we're going to go on to the role. While you assist me, take on the role of a world-class expert on, and then it's just the word topic with three stars either side. Again, if I scroll down, it gives the topic of what the this question is going to be on um, so that it helps prepare ChatGPT to be an expert in that field. So it's earthquakes. So while you assist me, take on the role of a world-class expert on topic who can analyse student work with great ease. Your assistance here is of utmost importance so that the student can progress in their knowledge. Then the next instruction, use the question, again in either three stars either side, and the rubric, three stars either side, to assess the student's answers, three stars either side. So they're each going to cons correspond to a bit below. So let's have a look. So we've got the question there. Um, then we have got the rubric underneath. And then we have got the students' answers. So for this example, there are 20 students' answers, all at various levels. 
after you have read each student answer, I would like you to complete the following section. So I wanted to do a section on prayers, and I've said, name each student and give them specific prayers personal to their work based on a particular effort or insight they made in their work. The next section is even better if. So ne name each student and give them specific feedback on how they can improve their answer to get to a higher level of the rubric. Do not provide an even better if if the student is already in level three. Then section three, create a question for each student that, when answered, will help that student move to the to a higher level of the rubric. For students already at level three, write a stretch question that will help them demonstrate the skill of problem solving. You can change some of this if you want and edit it. Um, and as you can see, it's what it's going to do is it's going to give some follow-up tasks for the next lesson for that student to help them improve and progress to the next level of that rubric then we've got a list of common misconceptions that i wanted to analyze so list any misconceptions found in students answers name each next to the misconception who made that misconception then literacy list any spelling and grammar mistakes found in the students work and i've put in brackets here because i'm in the uk use british spelling and grammar and then number six polaroid moment capture any sections of work that are very impressive and explain why they are impressive then I've said format your response with headings and subheadings. So finishing off the prep model there. So we got the, the prompt, the role, the explicit instructions, and then the parameters. So the bits in blue are the things that I suggest that you edit. Otherwise, it won't make any sense to you whatsoever. So you can, you've got what type of teacher you are, what the topic is of the question, the actual question, the rubric, and then your students' answers. And you might want to jump into the bit at the top here and edit these as well. So this will be downloadable for you as a Google Doc for you to edit and use as you see fit. And now I'm going to put it into ChatGPT and let's see the answer that it produces. If you have found this video useful, please do check out the AIeducator.io. There you will find information to professional development opportunities and more information on the AI Classroom best-selling book that came out earlier this year. Please do give us a follow on YouTube and on X, and I will see you very soon. Thank you.